Hey everyone. So today we're discussing the differences between um, different types and styles of construction on wigs. Um, I want to preface this video by saying that there are dozens, if not hundreds of combinations of constructions that you could potentially uh, buy. And um, I can't cover them all. Um, however, I'm creating this video to eliminate the discussion of the difference between lace wigs, multi-directional wigs, lace front, lace top, et cetera, um, for consultation purposes so that I can educate everybody about the integral differences between these two constructions, these two very basic, very common constructions, so that um, everybody can make a decision for themselves. In future videos, we will hopefully get to um, the difference between uh, falls, toppers, and other constructions also. But for this video alone, we're just addressing multi-directional tops, lace tops, and lace fronts, and how they compare and the different features. And I'll even take a chance to try each one on and put it into a ponytail for you so that you can understand how the different stitches behave differently on each construction. So let's get right into it. Okay, so today we're going to do a little recorded session uh, almost like a lecture of um, of how uh, lace tops, lace fronts, and multi-directional tops or French parts, as they're actually called, or um, skin tops, as they're called by most of the factories, how these will affect uh, how your wig wears and which one you want to wear for your purposes. Um, there are many differences between the different fabrics that are used in the process of making these wigs and knowing the differences will help you understand which one you want to buy and uh, whether or not you want to buy and change and repairs and all of that. So we're going to jump right in. I'm going to start with multi-directional tops and I'm going to try on each of these wigs to explain how they work. So multi-directional tops, if you look at the inside of the wig, you'll see this U shape. And if you look at the top of the wig, you'll be able to find a U shape that is this white skin type fabric. And if you look at the back of the wig, you'll see where it ends. These are wefts, these strings of hair are wefts. And if you look for that U shape, you can find where the skin looking fabric ends and those strings of hair begin. Multi-directional tops are made from several different layers of fabric. Multi-directional tops are made uh, from the hair being sewn through layer number one, attached and knotted to layer number two. And when layer number one and layer number two are, when it's knotted, the knot is on the opposite side of layer number two and the knots are protected between layer number two and layer number three of fabric. And then there's usually a lining num layer number four or sometimes even layer number five to protect all of those knots from friction and from, um, from, from wear and tear. When you have five layers of fabric, there's an inherent thickness. And if you feel for this, you'll feel that the manufacturers and the trends are leaning more towards flatter tops. And the manufacturers are, um, are making these thinner than ever before, but there's still a certain level of thickness that comes naturally from having several different layers of fabric. And therefore, those several different layers of fabric will be a little thicker, but it's not just up here that makes multi-directional tops thicker. When you have five layers of fabric all meeting at the front edge, you're going to have a certain amount of thickness. And there's no way that I can show you this without trying it on. But in addition to the thickness, 
underneath, when you have this edge of hair, it has to be covered with hair coming from underneath so that when you pull your hair back, you don't see empty fabric. So not only is there multiple seams and multiple layers of fabric all coming together at that front edge, but there's also multiple layers of hair from the top and from the bottom covering that edge. So the thick edge on this is going to be a little less natural. Not that, not just that, but if you look really closely at the directionality of the stitches that are sewn along the underside, you'll also notice that those hairs are sewn pretty much straight down. And so that is going to make this hair have this unnatural curve to its edge over here that makes it look so much more like a wig. Not just is that front edge hair sewn straight down, but if you look at it, multi-directional tops, in order to be multi-directional, in order for the hair to be able to move to here to show your skin part or to here to show your skin part, multi-directional tops are sewn forward. So you see how this hair angles downward and I'll try it on for you and I'll explain to you that's going to affect how this hair falls into your face. But before I try this on, I'm going to show you different constructions. This is a lace top. Hold on. And before I get into showing you a lace top, this is how it looks from the inside, same U shape, but you'll see this fabric is see-through. Before I show you a lace top, I'm gonna to show you what a lace fabric looks like. This is a super fine version of lace fabric. And if we have a white paper here, actually, perfect. I'm gonna put it behind here so that maybe you can get to see. I don't know if that's making it better or worse, but we'll try. I think it's making it worse. Let's try my hand. There we go. Maybe I'll even turn around the camera. Okay, but lace is a super thin, fine fabric. It's so thin, you can totally see me through it. Okay, it's a super thin, fine fabric. And if you look at the fabric itself really, really close, you can see this tiny little network of hexagons. I'm trying to figure out what's gonna make it visible, but I think that you can see it anyway. So there's tiny little linear network of hexagons. If you look at them, when I hold the fabric in the right direction, you see they show up in lines. Let's see if I can put my hand behind it. You might have to just trust me on it. But the point is that these little hexagons are lined up. And each of those hexagons, if you remember from when you were a kid, if you ever did hook rug, um, and I should be holding the straight edge, here we go. <laughs> It's easier to see actually, if you look at the straight edge, if I'm behind it, you see the network of hexagons that are lined up crosswise. If you ever did hook rug as a kid, then you know that hook rug was more squares and you would put the hook into the bottom edge of the square, hook it through and then wrap your thread around the needle and then pull the hook through so that it created a knot, basically a slip knot, for of the thread. And when you did hook rug, that thread, you wanted it to be even, both ends had to be even. Hair is attached to lace very similarly. It's not put through the surface of the lace and knotted underneath. Instead, it's attached to the surface of the lace and where it gets attached in the position of that little hexagon is gonna determine the directionality of the hair. So not only is lace this thin, fine, flat fabric that's going to mold to your head super, super, super flatly, but it's also going to control the directionality of the hair. Now I'm going to show you a lace top wig, and I'm going to explain all of that and how that manifests on the wig. This is a lace top wig. If you're gonna remember anything from this video, you're gonna remember my voice saying over and over, lace against skin disappears, lace against hair does not disappear. So when I put this lace wig against my skin, against my hand, you'll see that it almost looks like the hair is sewn 
into my hand. So this lace does not get left this long. This fabric does not get left this long. And the and it's not going to be on your hand. It's going to be on your head. And you're going to have hair underneath. And I'm going to try them on again and explain all of this to you. But the point of this is that, number one, because it's a thin, fine fabric, it sits flush with your head so much further back and it hugs your head and just looks like it's coming out of your head so much more than a multi-directional top, which by the way, again, has that U shape. And at the back of the U shape, when it transitions, it's gonna end up, there's also a seam that has to be covered. So it's gonna end up almost looking stiffer at the back. And this, because it's a thin, fine fabric, it's gonna transition into that fabric at the back just so much more smoothly. So it's going to affect the direction of the hair. It's going to affect um, the density. But there's one more thing about lace that nobody realizes. When you have a lace top, because the hair is sewn onto the surface, when you have a lace top or a lace front, because the hair is sewn onto the surface, for every long hair in the wig, you're going to have all of these short hairs. So while being hand sewn makes a lace top wig much less dense on the top and throughout the whole wig, the whole surface area of the wig, it has this double density up at the top because of those returns, because of those short hairs that are attached to each long hair and you can't cut them out because if you cut them out, the long hairs are just gonna fall out. So again, I'm gonna try on a lace top, a lace front and a multi-directional top to show you the difference. But there are people that are concerned about how delicate a lace top is because much like pantyhose, once this rips, it's very hard. It's gonna continue to fray and you really can't control a hole once you get a hole in your pantyhose or once you get a hole in your lace. So number one, it's a little harder to control. Number two, it's very thin, it's very delicate. And because the knots are on the surface, they're so much more susceptible to friction and wear and tear. So, so because of all that, there's a hundred different reasons why lace is so much more um, delicate. But you can't argue with the hairline that you get on the lace wig. It's so much more natural also. So I'll try them on and you'll see the difference. You'll see how one is more natural, one is more flat, one is more this, one is more that, one moves more freely, et cetera. But for the people who are concerned about how delicate the lace is, we have option number three, which is a lace front. This wig is a marriage of those two technologies. It has the multi-directional top. And if you look closely, you can see the seam where fabric number one ends and fabric number two begins. So there are some people who are concerned about this seam. Some companies do a better job or a lesser job at covering this transition right here. But everybody can agree that this combines the sturdiness of a multi-directional top and a multi-directional top because the knots are hiding under the surface does not have all those short hairs with the naturalness of a lace front. So you get that look of it coming out of your skin in the front and you get the subtle transition from fabric number one to fabric number two. And like I said, again, I'm gonna try all of these on so that you can see the difference, but you get that subtle transition and you don't get the return. So you get the freedom of movement that you have from a multi-directional top because the hexagons are not in a multi-directional top and the hexagons control the direction that the lace can move, that the hair can move within the lace. You get the lift in the front and the skin being visible. Okay, so working backwards, I'm going to start with the lace front. And some companies make their laces with a lot of room for people to fit the wig further back, etc. 
Um, so it kind of makes it a little difficult to see what's going on here. So I'm just going to try to fold it while I'm working on this so that I can explain. So actually, it helps me demonstrate. Remember how we talked about how lace over skin disappears, lace over hair does not disappear. This is a really great demonstration because I pulled the wig a little further back so you can see my hair. And I'm not wearing a velour band underneath here, which would effectively clean more of that hair up. But you can see here, number one, you can see that transition between fabric number one and fabric number two. And there are little things that you can do to fix this visibility of this transition. But I wanted to take a moment just to explain, number one, how you do see the returns, those short hairs in the front of the lace, but you don't get those short hairs further back in here. So because of the lack of double density in the front here, you have that freedom of movement throughout the whole thing. But again, because multi-directional tops are sewn forward, you do have that front heaviness on the sides of your face, that extra hair in your peripheral vision that do make it a little more difficult. And some people will discuss also when you put this into a pony that this comes out a little less natural because all of this hair from here to here is sewn forward. And just this hair is sewn into the hexagons with the directionality to lift up and back on both sides. So that's first a lace front. Okay, so now we switched to a lace top. So you can see automatically how it hugs the shape of my head much further back. And there's no transition from one fabric to the other. So you get that much more seamless. And if I put a little makeup on here to whiten the part, or if I pluck a little more hair out, there's no transition. It's much more seamless. It looks like it's coming out of my head. There is, however, and the second I touch it, you see this, that double density and that reactivity that you get from having those backwards hairs installed in between the longer hairs. Um, and just for a brief explanation, um, whenever you install hair on a wig, it has to be installed in the same direction that it grows on the human head. And the reason for this is that there's a cuticle on the hair. And when it grows on the human head, it points downwards, kind of like if you look at a hair on their microscope, they look kind of like dragon scales or fish scales, all pointed downward. And if you install some hairs backwards so that some of the hair has the scales pointed down, the cuticles pointed down, and some hair has the cuticles pointed upwards, they're going to catch on each other and get matted, knotted, bulky, fluffy, all those unattractive words. So, when you have these backwards hairs up at the root, you're going to have that kind of friction that happens at the root. Does that mean that it can't be flat? No. As a matter of fact, a lot of people are styling the, their wigs super duper duper flat, and they're getting this really flat, fresh out of the scalp kind of look out of their wigs and a little blow drying, a little maintenance can accomplish that altogether. I'm also gonna quickly pull this into a ponytail so that you can see that because of the density and because of the directionality, this when it's pulled into a ponytail, the hair just goes down the side as opposed to having like it did in the lace top that forward leaning, forward turning um, angle that it had in the lace front. This is the lace top and the lace front started from here, had the multi-directional top, which had that forward push. You also have, when you move your head, a little less freedom of motion up at the roots. However, you also have all of this exposed knots. All of these knots 
do leave you subject to so much more. And as much as I'm running my hands through the wig, if you were to do that all day, every day on a lace top wig, you would have so much more hair loss and so much more wear and tear so much faster on a lace top wig. And now we have a multi-directional top wig. It's a much shorter wig and it's not fitting my head 100% properly. Can I um, have the water and the comb. I just want to move the part a little bit so that it compares to everything. Um, so now we have a multi-directional top wig. And I think you can see right away that the scalp is whiter, brighter, and the stitches are all hiding under the surface. So those are all great features. But you can also see right away how this front edge is so much less natural. And even if I work out a little baby hair to try to obscure the edge and make it look more natural, you can always still see that there is a certain amount of bulk. And this is one of the thinner, flatter, multi-directional tops available on the market today. But you will always see a certain amount of bulk. And that is, again, from all the hair that's sewn in from underneath, all the hair that's sewn in from the top, all the hair that's sewn facing forward so that it ends up in my face. And also, you I mean, you can see without me pointing it out, all the hair that's in my peripheral vision and that's constantly angling forward on my face. There is much more freedom of movement at the roots. There is much less susceptibility to damage. But there's also a little bit of that pointy kind of weird back heavy sort of shape. Again, this can be styled flatter. This can be styled fuller. And we're not going to get any of that reactivity at the roots with the short hairs. But there's no way that this is ever going to look like it's coming out of my head unless I obscure the front edge dramatically and it's always going to have that thickness and that push forward. We can remove density from the side, even though this is one of the less dense wigs on the market today. So if we take more of that hair out of the side, it'll sit flatter. But at the end of the day, I have to hold all of that out of my face to stop it from falling into my face. So. Yes, lace has that ability to disappear into your skin and have the hair that's sewn onto it look like it's coming right out of your skin. But this doesn't have any of those visible stitches. And this has a different freedom of movement. So there are all these different features that will benefit you or cause you more maintenance throughout the life of this wig and any other wig, any lace wig. Okay, so that's our uh, discussion about the differences of between multi-directional tops, lace tops and lace fronts and how each of those constructions will affect your decision in your next wig to buy. And if you're having an issue with your current wig, how they're affecting what your issues are. Um, we hope that this video was super helpful and we hope to make many more videos for you with all this information, with more information on all different constructions coming up soon. Thanks so much.